Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple examples working through um, circular motion problems and, and looking at these situations. The first example comes actually right out of the textbook, page 156, number 18, just so you know. And so we have a situation where this object is uh, uh, moving around in a circle. So I simply want to try to uh, sketch out that situation. Circular pathway, more or less. And what I need to do, uh, identify the, the location of the center of the circle. I need to represent this thing. And, and one of the best ways to view this is is looking down from above. So we're going to take a top view and I'm going to show uh, what, when this thing is in, in this position here. And uh, so here's the object moving through the circle. It, it's, it's kind of, uh, let's just say it's headed this direction. And we're given some information about this object. We're told that the radius of the circle is 0 0.6 meters. So here's radius. Radius is actually the length right there to the center. And we're also told that there is a velocity. And we're dealing with univ um, universal, I'm sorry. We're dealing with uh, uniform circular motion. And so the speed will remain constant. So what we know is this in this problem. Uh, I'll put it down here. The radius is 0 0.60 meters. And the velocity, which is constant velocity, ah, sorry, mm -hmm. constant speed, the speed of the object is constant at 2.2 meters per second. But of course, the velocity will not be constant. The velocity is changing because the direction is constantly changing. OK. So is there anything else about this object that we know? Well, we're given in the problem the mass is going to be 40 grams. And so what I'm, I need to recognize meters, seconds in my units, and now grams doesn't really fit. I would like to have kilograms. So 40 grams, 0 0.40 kilograms for the mass. And so what I'm going to be asked to do is find the tension here in the string. And so I, I recognize this relationship where there is a centripetal force. And that centripetal force is the force of tension pulling toward the center of the circle. And so that force is along the line here, toward the center. There's tension. But that tension is what is causing this, the object to move in the circle. So it is going to be equal to the what we call the centripetal force, the force creating the circular motion. Think about this. That force is what continually turns the object. It continually changes its direction as it moves around the circle. And that's where um, it's this force that causes that acceleration, that change in direction. But a centripetal force from Newton's second law is equal to a mass times a centripetal acceleration. But we also know that a centripetal acceleration is equal to speed squared divided by radius. So I can do yet another equal sign and say that mac here is now going to be mass times speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. Well, at this point, as far as tension goes, I, I, I can simplify this. And I want to show this, even though you probably get it. Speed squared divided by radius. So this is what I'm looking for. What is the tension in the string? And it is because the tension is producing that centripetal force. Then I can go ahead and make everything here equivalent, and I got this. And, and I got this because, well, I know the mass, and I know the speed, and I know the radius of the circle. So I've got those quantities. All I have to do is plug and chug and get some calculation done. The mass here, 0 0.040 kilograms. The speed is 2.2 meters per second. But it's very important that I remember that the speed is squared. 
trust me guys, believe me, this right here is such a common thing to forget, to miss, that, uh, that you gotta drive that home. Look, do not lose track of your exponents, please. And the radius here, let me plug that in, we've got 0 0.60 meters. So when I perform this calculation, it, it's pretty simple, I get an answer, 0 0.32, Newtons. That's it. So, solving a problem involving uniform circular motion can be quite simple. And, uh, and the math is not hard. The equation really isn't very hard. You just start to re recall things, start to piece things together. And you know, maybe, maybe for your benefit, I want to highlight something. So look, from, from the notes, we remember that centripetal acceleration is speed squared divided by radius. And so that's why I was able to make this substitution from this to that in, in the equation, right? And so really, when you look at this, this is still mass times acceleration. But here, this acceleration is specific. It is the centripetal acceleration. Now, uh, with this situation, I want to examine uh, a slightly different viewpoint for this problem. So we're told about this, this 40 gram stone whirled horizontally on the end of that string. Okay, so you guys probably recognize that, that if you're twirling something around, uh, let's say you're holding the end of the string overhead and you're twirling it in a horizontal circle, then the string will not be truly horizontal. So this, solving it this way, this is sort of an oversimplified uh, look at this circular motion. And the reason is, um, it, it's fine, we did good work, but we're sort of making an assumption that gravity isn't affecting things. And, and we don't see how it could affect things here simply because of our point of view. I mean, let, let's examine this. Let's, let's real quick have a free body diagram of the situation. So I'm going to draw this real quick. It's worth doing. Here's our x direction, y direction. And while it's right here, I have this force of tension in the string to the right. And this is this is pretty slick, what I have still is, is the center of the circle is actually just exactly to the right of where it's located at this moment. And so the center of the circle is here somewhere on the x-axis. And that's nice because what this tells me is that I have this equivalency going on. That force of tension, since it is pointed at the center, and the force of tension is completely equal to my centripetal force makes my job pretty easy. And you can see that the calculation was quite simple. But the issue here, from the top view, is I, I have a hard time seeing the entire situation. Let me show you what I mean. For that same situation, what if I looked at it from the side? Side view. So I'm going to have uh, I'll, I'll start right away with a free body diagram. All right, here's X, here's Y. And if I look at this from the side, it would almost be like looking, taking the circle and, and tilting it and tilting it and tilting it until I was looking at that circle edge on. And so here in this diagram, I'm not going to see any circle. I would simply see a line, and this, this would be kind of strange. Uh, but you can see that even viewed edge on, the center of the circle is still to the right of the object in this location. So there's my center of the circle. And I can still represent the force of tension here on the x-axis. That is not a problem. It's uh, all I'm doing is remember just tilting this and, and there I go. But from the side, I can easily see something else. And the issue here 
is gravity pulls down. And you can see that here in this diagram, uh, I, I'd have a really just about impossible time showing it in this diagram, showing the weight. It, it's, it's as if the weight would actually be acting straight down into the page as a force, as an arrow. And I, it's really hard to show that on a two-dimensional diagram like this. But if I tilt this up, then as I tilt it up, that weight downward would become more and more evident, more and more visible, and until I can see it here. And so here's the thing to consider. Uh, it, it's easy to see here that forces are unbalanced in the y direction. That's, that's kind of an issue. There's, you, this force absolutely exists, but there's nothing vertically up here to balance it out. So this tells us that the circle can't truly be flat. Well, well, okay. What I should say is that the string can't truly be flat. In reality, the string must be at some angle. So uh, this must be wrong. In fact, impossible is, is a good way of putting it. So we'll contrast that with, with what really is happening, where the string must be at some angle. There's tension in the string. I st I'm still looking at this from the side, by the way. Still my side perspective. And the center of the circle is still somewhere here on the x-axis. Good there. And I still have weight pulling straight down. Force of gravity. But now there's something that you need to recognize. And it is that because we have the tension up at some angle now, it has a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. So check out what's happening. Now all of a sudden, we have something to balance out the weight. And so forces vertically are balanced, and that's good and forces horizontally are not balanced, and actually that's fine. Because if you think about this, we need this to be unbalanced. We need there to be an acceleration toward the center of the circle. That is what ends up producing the circular pathway, the curved pathway. That's what turns it continually as it goes around the circle, is this unbalanced force right here. Now you probably can recognize that you know if we know an angle, angle theta, then this guy right here will be hypotenuse times cosine of theta. So force of tension times cosine of the angle, right? And it is that one that equals your centripetal force. The one pointed actually toward the center of the circle is your centripetal force. Not the whole tension, only the horizontal component of it right here. All right, so. Let's actually look at a problem where, where this is a factor. And, uh, and what I'd like to do is uh, actually take a look at the flying pig. So with our flying pig, next example. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, some general information about the pig, and we will get to analyzing its motion and, and solving for for a particular value. So, the mass of the pig, 155 grams. Don't ask me how I know. We're going to say that as the pig flies around in a circle, its speed will be 1.50 meters per second. Actually, it, it's real simple to get this. Let me draw a quick sketch, and we'll talk about this. So we have a, I'm, I'm gonna take sort of a, not a top view, not a side view, but a little bit of a hybrid view, uh, looking at both. So I'm gonna quickly just, there's the circle. And you can see that, that we're sort of looking at it on edge, but not entirely. Let's say the pig is here. And pig's got a couple wings, right? The center of the circle would be here. Easy to see that. And the thing is about this, the string holding the pig to the ceiling comes up 
like this. And so there, there you can see the radius of the circle, but there is some angle here, this angle theta. And, oh, let me label the radius for you. And this is the string, right? And so how would we measure the speed of the pig? Well, um, we, for a speed, we need a distance and a time. Well, the distance in one trip around the circle is equal to the circumference. Circumference is equal to two times pi times the radius. And then, so I have distance, easy enough, I need the time. Well, it's kind of going a little too fast to just use a stopwatch and measure the time for one trip around. So it's easy enough to measure multiple trips. And so what I did was I, I let it go 10 times around, and I measured that, and divided by 10, and I got the time. And a distance divided by a time is your speed. And we still use a V for speed. Um, so just, just go with that, right? Uh, the radius itself is going to be 0 0.435 meters. I actually did take the time to try to measure these as best I could. Um, with that radius, we're going to calculate the circumference and get the distance, and then I'll, I'll actually give you a time and we'll work this out. The angle here, right here, the angle that the string makes with the horizontal, angle theta, uh, turns out to be 61 degrees on average. So here's what I'm going to ask. Uh, a couple questions. Let me, I'll put this on the next page. Questions about the example here. What are the centripetal force and the tension in the string? We want to find those two solutions. There's three of these notes. So. That's our goal, right? And, uh, and so I will have to ultimately do some sort of free body diagram. There are forces acting on this object, affecting its motion. X direction, Y direction. And I I'm basically going to sort of analyze it when the pig is right here in, along the circular pathway. So the centripetal force will be toward the center, and the tension will be up at this angle along the string. So that's what I want to draw. I'm going to have a weight pulling down, and I'm going to have a tension in the string. And these really are the only two forces affecting the pig, force of tension. And so here's what I recall that, uh, well, th this does not have any x component to it. It's just all in the y direction. This force has both an x and a y component to it. There's the x component, and bring that straight across, about there. There's the y component. And drawn carefully, you can see that these two balance. Right. So, oh, uh, one more thing. I have an angle, right? And I, I was given the value of this angle theta right here. There's an angle theta. But uh, the components. Now, hopefully you're getting good at finding components of a, of a vector. Uh, this component right here. This guy is, is equal to this side of the triangle that has theta in it. And so since it's opposite of theta, I need to use the sine function. So this is going to be force of tension times sine of theta. This component, since it is adjacent to theta, I'll need the cosine function. So it will be force of tension times cosine of theta. And there's, there's other things I can work out. I mean, if I have balanced forces vertically, then I know that Ft sine theta is equal to Fg. Um, and, and that may come in handy later on. So let me see what, what I have to do here. 
here's my goal. I'm going to first try to work out, uh, based on the information that I have, the centripetal force. Let's see if I can do this. Well, centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration. So there's my basic beginning of an equation. But I can break up centripetal acceleration. Mass times speed squared divided by radius. So the question I must ask myself, if I want to find this, do I know enough information? Do I know all these values? Well, I know the mass. I am given that value. And I know speed. I'm given that value. And I know radius. I'm given that value. I'm good to go. So the centripetal force. My mass is 155 grams. So that actually converted to kilograms? 0.155 kilograms. My speed. Now when I work this out, the speed that I got was 1.5 meters per second. And I found that you know, from using radius to find circumference, which is my distance traveled. And when I measured it going 10 times around for the time, 10 times around got me 18.25 seconds. So one, divide that by 10, one time around, 1.825 seconds. And with the distance and the time, I was able to calculate that velocity. So that's where that 1.5 comes from, 0.50 meters per second. And that is squared, right? The radius is given as 0 0.435 meters. So I work this out. Centripetal force comes out to 0 0.80, allowing for a tiny bit of rounding differences, 0 0.8 newtons. Not a huge force, but we don't need a huge force to do this. So I have one of my answers. Box. Now, the other question, the force of tension. So what I know is that the, the tension in the string, well, this, the tension is up at, along this angle. And I know something about this because I can see force of tension is sort of buried inside this component. And this is nice because this component is unbalanced, right? This is actually equal to my centripetal force. It's the force that points toward the center. The center is over here somewhere on the x-axis. Sensor, right there. And so the, the, the arrow that points toward the center of the circle is the centripetal force. And I know that it is Ft cosine theta. And so this is pretty cool. I actually know the centripetal force, and I know theta. I ought to be able to calculate the force of tension just from this. No big, huge mess to go through. Let's see if we can get that. So I'm going to say that the uh, force of, or centripetal force is equal to that. Force of tension times cosine theta. And it's the force of tension I'm looking for. So I'm going to divide both sides by cosine theta. And I'll just kind of rearrange this a little bit. I, I'm in the habit of liking my unknown on the left side. Don't let that throw you off if, since seeing it on the right side. If you want to keep this on the right side of your equal sign, that's fine. Uh, cancel, cancel. And so I have F, uh, centripetal force divided by cosine theta. Well, I know centripetal force, 0 0.80 newtons. And I know theta, 61 degrees. And when I do this calculation, I get 1.65 newtons. Box. So that's it. It's, it's not terribly difficult to deal with something at, at this angle. As long as you're given enough information, there are some trickier situations um, I, I'm not going to try to get into those right now. I do not want to get bogged down in too much computation with equations. A little bit, yes, we need to be able to do that. But, uh, but, but more, or, or at least as important as the math and the equations is an understanding of what's going on. 
So in the first example, it's quite simple. We, we dealt with a, a very basic circular motion situation. We were ignoring the effects of gravity, uh, viewing it just from the top. We were able to say that the tension in the string is the centripetal force, and we easily found the amount of tension in that string based on a certain radius of the circle and a certain speed uh, and a certain mass of the object. In the second example, with the flying pig, we had to be given some information, so, so that's kind of a, a usual thing, right? And envisioning the situation uh, actually is quite important. And there, there's a, a, a very critical understanding that the force that is producing, I've been using red the whole time, I'll stay consistent for you. The force that has been producing the circular motion is the centripetal force, and that is always the one pointed toward the center of the circle. There is a force along the string. This does exist. There's a force of tension there. But if you look carefully at what's happening, it is the horizontal component of that tension that is causing the thing to turn and, and move in this circular manner. And that's what we worked out here. We recognized that is that horizontal component pointed toward the center of the circle. That's the component of that tension there. And we got that answer, and we're good to go. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.